Ian Jackie and the entire PLG family, the PS, CG, all protocols of South, good afternoon. I'm here, first of all, on behalf of all the partners that have been invited. I request you to kindly stand, the partners that are here. I will not be able to mention all of them, but uh, I see the EDC, the country director, Justice Defenders, Miriam Washera. I see the director from Tristar Foundation, Rini Gamao. I see the ED, Crime C. Poor, Peter Ouko. Um, and I think I will not have known the others. We also have other partners who could be suppliers, could be partners, could be ex prisoners. These days we call them the formerly imprisoned people. So I'm representing those even before I present Faraja Kariboni. Um, there are other partners who are not here who I would like to recognize because I was reading a book that Madame Monini did a forward in 2013. It was done by a group called Muhuri. Muhuri is Muslims for Human Rights Foundation. They are based in the coast province with their ED called Hussein Khalid. And uh, he wrote a book. They, they call it Actualizing Penal Reforms Best Practices in Prisons in Kenya in 2013. In that book, Madam Wanini mentioned a few partners that she said helped her at the start of the reforms. There was Mahuna Church, there was Father Gross, there was Roddy. There was Family Transformation Ministries, there was Legal Resource Resources Foundation, Kituo Chasheria, Clear, Alpha Kenya, IGM, and Philemon Trust. And she mentioned that if those partners had not come to assist her at that point, maybe she would not have achieved successes of reforms. Um, most of them are not here. And even as I stand here, many of the founders of these organizations have gone before us. We have Father Peter Mayenberg, the founder of Araja, who passed on last year. We have Edward Gunjiri, Edward, sorry, Gunjiri, Roddy, director, also passed on. We have Kevin from Philemon Trust, has also passed on. And we have the founder of Father Gross, they have all passed on. And we believe now that Madam Monini has joined them since they pioneered reforms in the prisons in Kenya, probably if they are prisons in heaven, they shall continue with reforming people there. Uh, in 2020, when Madame Monin wrote her book, The Disruptor, we were very touched as Waranya Foundation because in her appreciation, she gave a special tribute to Father Peter Mayenberg that is the founder of our Raja Foundation, and myself, and I'm reading from her book, and she said that she gave a special tribute to Faraja Foundation because we wholeheartedly supported her in endeavors to bring reforms in the prison service. She also spe gave special tributes to Mrs. Kamuge of the Beauty College that is called Vera. This is the one canon was referring to that people were marching and doing patents in the prisons and she was the founder of, she is the founder. I could not reach her because she, I would have wished she comes to this mass. So those are the tributes from other people. Let me read a very brief tribute from Faraja so that I pass on the mic to the rest of us. Uh, the late Wanini Kiredi, Senior Assistant Commissioner General of Prisons and former Commandant Prison Staff Training College, a great, a great friend and partner of Faraja Foundation. Even upon her demise, Madam Wanini Kireri remained a great partner who brought our mission of offender rehabilitation and reintegration to fruition through many projects we did together. Madam Wanini's interaction started with Faraja Foundation in the early 2000s when our late founder, Father Peter, visited Lanata Women Prison where she was officer in charge. At that point, if many of us remember, the prisons were coming out from being closed, and it was not very rare to, it was not very common to find people coming in. But Amwanini invited this white man 
She, he just wanted to give newspapers to the inmates to read. And Father Peter said, bring all the newspapers you can bring. Shortly, she told Father Peter, said, the windows are very small in the walls. Can we make them bigger? She said, yes, come and do that. So, Madam Wanini, even at that time, when prisons were no go zones to many of us, she said yes. Uh, Jane, myself, I met her in Chimola Tower, early 2006, I believe, and she allowed us to do trainings there for the officers because Madam Wanini also wanted to empower officers who, as we all know, are the agents of change to the, to the inmates. The partnership women went on after she became the commandant of the prison staff training college, where we have a writer foundation with other partners, trained all the officers that were being trained in the United Nations minimum rules and treatment of offenders. Last year, when Father Peter passed on, we requested the Commissioner General to send Madam Wanini to represent the service at the mass that we did in Nangata. Because Father Peter, he told me when I was very new in Faraja, there's the lady called Madam Wanini, who used to be in Nangata, and when they removed her, I shed tears, but she has come back. So I told the Commissioner General, this is the lady who knows Father Peter even more than myself as Jane, and she came graciously and stood on behalf of the Kenya Prison Service. She was indeed a trailblazer, disruptor of the status quo, and to keep her legacy burning, we are promising as Faraja and other stakeholders and partners to see the open door policy that she embraced with all her heart become a force to record with in paper and practice for many generations to come. But a P.S. Um, we haven't seen this policy in paper. I think we, I'm not sure if it's in paper anywhere. We are requesting through your office that if it is not there, you allow us to consult amongst ourselves and other partners and the government. And possibly we have a paper that guides the open door policy so that we can even know as partners what is our role, what, are, what can we do in the reforms, in the correctional services. Because I believe, and all partners will agree, it is good to be guided by a document sometimes, because probably sometimes we may step on the feet of the government because we may not know. And this, we want to do it in honor of Madam Wanini, so that anyone that comes before us and after us will know she indeed reformed the correctional services without fear and without favor. And with all those many remarks, we are saying, rest in peace, in perfect peace, Madam Wanini, fare thee well. This is from the Faraja Foundation Fraternity, Asante. My brother Ian, uh, and my wife, the Kerry family, our peers, our Commissioner General, the Deputy, all senior officers present, all distinguished guests and fellow mourners. My name is Pitoko. And uh, as I sat here listening to Madam Wanini's sister, I used to call her, I still call her Madam Wanini's sister, Reverend Joyce, talk about those people who are moved from death row to go to the service out there. And uh, she reported that they did not escape. Three of them are here today. I being one of them. My brother Wakanen is there. My brother Parsin is there. And many other inmates. I stand here on behalf of all the inmates in this country today and the former inmates who are calling Madam Monini Mom. We celebrate the life of Madam Monini. And to those who listened to the interview she did, she did that was done on NTV on Saturday. You remember there was a word that she reused about three times. She said, Hap water nikumbuka. She used the water nikumbuka, ama tutamukumbuka, thrice. And it was just about the prison reforms. I'd like to acknowledge that Madam Wanini could not have had the impact she's had in our lives, and particularly in my life, without the support of all the staff 
all her colleagues in the service, all her bosses, and also all the inmates. There are things you might not know about committee, and allow me, Mr. Commissioner, just to share a few of them. I'm glad my elder brother, my teacher, I also call him my dad, Mr. Kisingu and Mr. Ogore are both here, and they were in committee at that time. Committee was unruly, committee was unmanageable. And I remember many times when many people, when some of the, oh, my colleagues wanted to express their dissatisfaction with what was going on. They would climb on the roofs and then wait and wail and, you know, cause all kinds of drama. Sometimes this happened when guests had come in and it was quite an embarrassment. And I remember one day, my colleagues approached Mr. Kisingu and Madam Wanini and told them, instead of what does wachoke wakipana uko juna wafungwa, because some of us, maybe we just wanted to express, you know, that we could face off with the law enforcement or with our minders. We said we are going to do it. We say now we are going to be in charge of helping our colleagues reform. And the reform process was fully supported by the officers in committee, by Madam Manini, by the commission. I remember Mr. Omondi was there, and then Mr. Osugo came. And then all that we saw happening within the prisons was based on teamwork. Madam Manini reminds me of what teams should do together to achieve what we can achieve. The last time I was in this college, I was in our office. It was always open to me. She's always been a mentor. She's been more of a mother than a friend to me. And I told her, just to share what Crime Sipoa, the organization that I am privileged to work at, has been achieving. This is the first NGO to be formed behind bars. Thanks so much to the prisons department. But today, as we stand here to celebrate the life of Madame Monini, what started on death row in committee also has a presence and registered in the United States of America as an NGO. This could not have happened if the prisons department, all of you, to all we owe gratitude, to all of you who supported Madam, been there to support us. We started on death row in committee. Today we are in 10 prisons across the country. We are in 26 schools across the country and we're in five counties of Kisumu, Nakuru, Nairobi, Kajiado, and parts of Kiambu. Thank you so much, Madam, for all that you mean to us and for having led us in this journey. I just want to remember one thing about Madam. She was selfless and she was loyal to her friends. She loved family. Most of the time she would talk to me, she would talk to me about her son Ian. And I would talk to her about my son Keith and my daughter Whitney. It wasn't easy having gone to prison in 1998 on a wrongful conviction. And having borne the branch of, you know, before the prison's reform started, being locked in 23 and a half hours a day, being allowed only to go out for, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes to bask in the sun. And we breathed a breath of fresh air in 2002 when the late President Kibaki came to power with Uncle Mooney and the entire team of the reform journey began in the prisons department. What you see in the prisons department is not contrived. I speak from experience. I speak the journey I've walked. I speak the life I've lived. And I speak with authenticity, knowing that good things have come out of this prison, and knowing that our prisons require all the support that we can give it in legacy of Madame Malini Kiriri. I thank the prisons department and I thank Madam for opening the doors to all the partners. Madam Jane has spoken here. I also call our lady sister, Madam Nagate. I know she's more affected than most of us. I know the late Madam Pauline Wanja. They were always in a, in, a, in a group that always used to visit us and talk to us and mentor us. And all inmates today and all ex inmates, we join you in mourning. An icon, a legend, a lady who's left us a legacy to behold and to follow. Not more than uh, two months ago, I got in touch with Madame Manino, and I told her there's a funding that's coming our way, and I asked her if she could be our guarantor, if she could write an approval about what Crime Sipoa does. 
and she said, Pete, it's okay, put me there as a referee. That is the heart she had. And today, I just want to ask all of us, wherever we are, Pani Popote to Nipo. She was simple but elegant. She was high up there but mixed with everyone. That's the life I've seen in most of the officers that I've interacted with. I love sitting here today with my friend Rene from Chris that was asking me if I feel any fear whenever I meet with the prison officers or the people who, grow, I, mean, who I, I was in, with in prison for 18 years. And I told her, absolutely not. I am today what I am because of the prison's department. And I honor you guys, I honor you all, and I honor the legacy of Madame Kennedy. God bless all of you, and may your name is rest, soul rest in peace. Thank you. Sabina Kweke, Commissioner of Prisons, retired Jen Marioba, and all protocol of SAD. My name is Judith Grace Akini, some call me Saga, some call me Makodongo. And today I am sad. I really don't know where to start, but help me God. I want to talk about what I can remember about Madame Wanini. Forgive me if I will be haphazard because as I've said I'm really sad. I've jotted a few points here so that I won't I won't forget. Could be mixed up. Madame Walini was eloquent. She was beautiful, elegant in all her ways. In everywhere, everything that she did, in everything that she touched. I first met her at Langata Women's Prison where I was incarcerated for a crime of drug trafficking. And that was in the year, I, if I'm not wrong, 2003. And when she came, she came with a wind of change. She came in with a different mindset. Today I'm happy that I have even seen and remembered uh, a retired commissioner, Gilbert Omondi, I remember he was always smiling when he came to prison. He is still smiling till today. Thank you, sir, for the things that you did for us when you were there. Um, I also want to thank, let me thank them now because maybe we may not meet again soon. I've seen Madame Rose. Madame Rose was there just before Madame Wanini came. Thank you, Madame, for being our good mother. I'm sure there are others that I may have not seen. I've seen Madame Olivia Obel. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Madam Kimani, thank you. Reverend Gatimu, thank you. There are so many things that you did for us that you may not know in one way or another. But again, here, we are here today to talk about or to eulogize my dear Madam Wanini Irene. As I've said, I don't know how to begin to describe her. We used to call her British, for those of us who were in prison that time. Because in our minds, we thought that, you know, being a British woman, you know, you're polished, you're good, everything good about you comes with the British. And I am here on behalf of also um, my friends, whom she touched their lives. It's unfortunate that we cannot stand here, each one of us, to speak. I will start with Robbie, who was sick at that time, and I will tell you a little bit about that. There is Priscilla Kulonge, and I think many others that I may not know. As I said, Madame introduced change and the prison that was then very difficult for most uh, warders at that time to accept, because they were not used to you know, proper rehabilitation. Probably that is what they knew at the time. Prison was punitive. It was not a rehabilitation uh, center. But when we went, there was this wind of change that came with Uncle Mudi Awori, uh, Commissioner Gilbert Omondi, and now Madame Wanini, who put her foot down that these changes must take place. 
And, and together with Faraja, Peter, uh, Father Peter Mienba, may God rest his soul in peace. I keep asking why do good people, where do good people like those ones go? Father Peter of Faraja and Madame Wanini introduced a library. I will go through them very fast, just in case you may not know how these things came about for those who were not at Langata, because I was there when these things were happening. We introduced a resource center. We had a salon where we could make our hair. And I was so happy because there's a hairstyle I used to love so much. And funny enough, every time I put that hairstyle, when Mana was coming around, she had also put the same hairstyle. So I used to feel so nice, you know? Look, Mana Wanini Lam make a style. Come on, Mimi, now Naji. You know, it made me feel good and my days passed. There was a school at the main prison that was also Madame Wanini and Father Peter of Faraja Trust. They introduced formal education. And my background as a lecturer made me, so me head the school. And we did our first KCP exam and we topped all the prisons. That was Madame Wanini. There was a canteen. We could now eat bread and milk for those who could afford. There was a telephone booth for those who wanted to call home that Madame Wanini uh, introduced. Uh, Father Peter bought beds, blankets, we had mosquito nets. There was a daycare now for children, the inmates' children. Um, there was the construction of the Catholic Church and uh, benches for inmates. We used to sit on the floor, now we could sit on, uh, on benches. Uh, he, Father Peter and Madame Wanini ensured that those inmates who could not afford medicine had their medicine. He would buy, he would make sure that he buys this medicine if the inmate didn't have these prescriptions. And, uh, you know, not every inmate had money, pocket money. So, Father Peter made sure that every Easter, every Christmas, we knew whether we had money or not. Mkatea Father and Amaziwa Itaku, Itakucha. And that was a rare gem in the prison. Just like boarding school, people treasure bread and milk. I remember we even went, we started visiting. There was inter-prisons, we would visit one prison uh, uh, to another. And there were competitions. And just as, um, okay, these are the things she did together with uh, Father Peter. And many more that probably I may have forgotten. Now herself as a person. She introduced the beauty pageant. As I've said, she was beautiful herself, both inside and outside. We loved these beauty pageants. She called Madame, uh, Ve uh, Madame Kamunge of Vera. She used to come and make us look pretty, bring for us clothes, and that day would be wonderful for the inmates. We even produced a song, something that had never been done, by, uh, we are headed by Jemima Yongo, and the song was called Yesu Pendola, Yesu Pendola or something like that, Pendola Yesu. And me, you can see, if you check that video, you'll see me, you see Roby dancing jubilantly, forgetting that we were in, you know, incarcerated somewhere and feeling sad. She made sure that we were all the time happy. The visiting area was one dark place. Those who remember, if your visitor comes to visit, they would be looking at you from one dark pit on all day. You cannot even see them. You don't even know whom you're talking to. But Madam made this all different by creating a space where you could now see who had come to visit you and talk to them well. She took particular interest in those who are very ill. As I've said, my friend was ailing, Roby, and we were staying in the same ward called Special Watch. And when Madam was doing her rounds, you know, this was now internal. You know, this, were, this is not reforms, it's just from inside her. She would come to the cell where we were sleeping because I was looking after her. She was not able to walk, to eat, and she would ask me or ask her, Robbie, Leo, when you are so bad, she would tell me, Grace, if she has not eaten, try to give her something. To. She would come and squat, literally where she was lying, almost dying. And I believe that gave her hope, and that is why she rose up and is up till today. 
She allowed many, please forgive me, because I'll have nowhere else to talk about her. She allowed a lot of activities, you know, of progress to the inmates. And this saw me doing a course, a higher diploma course in community development and, pro and project management by Premise College. It was sponsored again by Father Peter Mienberg. I think God put these two people together for a good purpose. And it was not only, not only I, we were many who he sponsored. Then, um, as Reverend Mutugo has just said, that if she touched you, then keep the candle burning. Madam, we are keeping that candle burning by visiting various prisons, myself and Robbie, and giving them love and hope, and telling, you know, there's no prison we go to without mentioning Madam Wanini Kiveri. And I always remember because I used to confuse her name. She, I would call her Keriri, then she would say, no, say Kireri, <laughs> you know? It was fun just being with her. We shall keep that fire burning. And those who, we have a YouTube channel that she used to follow, I was very surprised. There's a day we came with Robbie and we were passing by Ruin and we said, ah, see, training college is just here, let's go and say hi to Madam. We didn't give an appointment. She was a very senior person, we can't just walk in and walk into her office. But she took time to speak to us, I remember, at the gate. Because she asked them, Nikinanani, they said, Saga and Robbie said, okay, let me tell them. And she spoke to us. And we made agreement that we would come on a day when she was free. Who does that? Ex-prisoners. She wouldn't have time, but she did have time for us. I hope I have not forgotten the good things that Madam did, to, did for us. And I would just like to say that <sighs> Madam Wanini, you will forever be remembered. You will forever remain in our hearts. You are gone but not forgotten. May the winds of heaven blow softly and whisper in your ears. I shall speak of your goodness. Everywhere I go. Dear Lord, secure her soul at the right hand of your seat. Very well, brother, till we meet again. Thank you so much. God, she helped me publish sorry, my book that is being sold on Amazon all over the world. With Father Peter Kimani and Father Peter Mienberg. Madam, may you rest in eternal peace.